In today's video, I'm gonna be going through a preview of the much anticipated Wasabi Wallet 2.0. This should be an exciting one, so be sure to buckle up. Uh, welcome back, my friends, yet again to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin club, and all around raging capitalist. And so in today's video, I'm really gonna pick apart what is changing, what's being promised as part of this big uh, 2.0 update to Wasabi Wallet. For those of you who may not be familiar at all with Wasabi Wallet, uh, Wasabi is a desktop uh, Bitcoin wallet focused on privacy. Uh, and so I've done a number of videos actually on Wasabi in the past uh, that I will link in the description down below and show on the screen here briefly. Um, so be sure to go check those out if you are uh, kind of starting at ground zero. But in today's video, I'm really gonna kind of compare and contrast what's changing, uh, and we'll talk about potential timelines, features, UI, all that good stuff, and more. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is great to have you. And for those new to the channel, and I know there are many of you, right now there's over 80% of you currently watching who are not currently subscribed. And so if you like this content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join our merry gang in cyberspace. Uh, I'm definitely going to be covering Wasabi 2.0 once it starts launching, uh, hopefully here very shortly, and so you won't want to miss a thing. With all that out of the way though, let's go ahead and jump into an overview of the 2.0 preview. Okay, so before we jump into the actual updates, I just wanna really, really quickly refresh folks who may be newer to these concepts about the kind of gist of uh, Bitcoin privacy. So fungibility is one of the key traits of money. Um, you know, a unit of money should, should be exactly the same as a, the same unit uh, of money elsewhere. So for example, one Bitcoin should be the same as another Bitcoin. And that is indeed true at the protocol level from a sort of technology standpoint. But when we start layering on human uh, interaction with that protocol, that no longer remains true. And I've done, again, prior videos on this. But suffice it to say that, you know, let's say some Bitcoin was used for some illicit or illegal, you know, purpose. Um, you may have a third party such as an exchange who says, hey, those coins are tainted. I don't want those coins, um, you know, but I will accept these other ones that have no history of being used for illicit means. And so that's what people are talking about when they talk about Bitcoin fungibility. And indeed, it is a challenge. It is a, uh, an area of opportunity for the community. Uh, this is something that Wasabi has been um, working against for a very long time. And so uh, let's talk about the two main pieces of this update. One is a completely revamped UI that promises to uh, be you know, much, much cleaner than the current uh, UI, which you know, for those who are familiar, I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad, uh, but it can certainly be a lot more intuitive, particularly for the average or a more average user, which is clearly what Wasabi is going after in this case. They're trying to, uh, by their stated goals, make privacy for everyone, privacy by default, privacy without friction. And so uh, the UI revamp is going to uh, attack exactly that. I'll go through that in just a moment. The second really big update is around their actual coin join protocol. Uh, they are switching from uh, what is their current kind of zero link framework focused on blind signatures to what they call Wabi Sabi, which is a new coin join protocol uh, based on keyed verification anonymous credentials or KVAC. And we'll talk about all of that as well. Let's break apart each of those though. First, let's look at the UI. And so I'm gonna throw up a image of the current interface just as an anchor point and baseline. And then let's now take a look at one of the um, you know, images, this came from a presentation they did recently that I will link in the description down below so you can take a look. Uh, it covers this and a lot more. But as you can see, this is a, a lot more sort of intuitive, right? You've got a much more, I mean, this almost to me looks like, you know, some of the Ledger Live um, uh, application and say what you will about Ledger, but I think one thing they've gotten really well is user interface. 
And so this looks a whole lot more like that and perhaps other, um, you know, other kind of um, UIs that you've seen elsewhere. But you've got, you know, your wallet here, you've got the send and receive buttons clearly at the top right. Uh, you've got your balance over time. You have the privacy status here in the middle, which is really nice. What percent of your funds are uh, are private versus not private? And note that they've abstracted away some of the anonymity set uh, and and sort of concepts like that that the average user aren't really going to be um, you know digging into or grokking. And then you've got a nice clean kind of uh, transaction history here at the bottom. So this is really nice. I mean, I think it, it looks it looks clean. It looks really really good. Um, you know, that's sort of it on the UI side. Again, they offer a couple other glimpses of this in their presentation that I will link. Uh, they've got a dark mode and a light mode, uh, you know, as uh, as modern day requires. Um, but there you have it. I think this is a really, you know, welcome update for the, um, particularly for the average user. Let's now talk about the second big piece, which is the new CoinJoin protocol. So they're calling it Wabi Sabi, and this is actually Japanese for a kind of worldview focused on the acceptance of uh, of kind of imperfection. Um, and you might say, wow, that's a weird thing to call a coin join protocol, um, but it's sort of this acceptance of the you know, uh, lack of Bitcoin fungibility that we were talking about earlier, at least again on this kind of social layer when humans start interacting with Bitcoin. Um, and so that's kind of interesting, their sort of philosophy there. Uh, but what they're calling Wabi Sabi, how they're describing it, is a, a generalized Chalmian coin join protocol based on keyed verification anonymous credentials and homomorphic value commitments. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go into all the gory depths of, of what that actually means, but I will link you to uh, their white paper for Wabi Sabi and one of the other key research papers that it references for that keyed verification uh, credential scheme that's being used. But let me at least attempt to talk through at a high level what this actually means. Uh, let's first look at a visual example of the current implementation uh, which is their zero link framework. And this is useful for folks who maybe haven't had a good visual for CoinJoin uh, transactions more generally. And so in this sort of simplified example, on the left-hand side here, you have this setup whereby three users on the left, so you've got, um, you know, you've got the 1.1, uh, the 1.3, and the 1.5 uh, Bitcoin users. And they are entering into this kind of mutual, um, you know, mutually coordinated uh, transaction to mix their coins. And the purpose of this is again to obfuscate the linkage between the specific inputs and outputs. And so, what's happening in the current framework is that the mixed outputs all have the same denomination. And so, you see here in these green, uh, these three green mixed outputs all of one Bitcoin each. And then what happens is the users will receive change back. So think of when you go to a store, you pay, you know, with cash at least, um, you know, you may get change in return. And so this is happening at the bottom of the left-hand side. And so user one has 0.1 Bitcoin returned to him or her. Uh, user two has 0.3. User three has 0.5, etc. And so what happens from here is, uh, let's say that one of the users who has a, you know, one Bitcoin that's been mixed, we're now on the right hand side. Um, when that individual spends the mixed uh, output from the coin join transaction, which is now an input into this new transaction, these output, these resulting outputs cannot be attributed to the inputs from the first transaction. So that's the sort of link that's being severed as a result of doing a coin join transaction. Whereas if you were to go and spend what is often called the toxic change or the unmixed change that's returned to you, um, that is attributable. You can link that 0.5 Bitcoin in blue to the blue user at the very start of this process. So the big sort of, um, 
challenge uh, among a couple others that the Wabi Sabi protocol is seeking to address is this requirement to have um, you know fixed sort of denominations. Uh, that is restrictive certainly for users, but it also makes these transactions less efficient than they could be in terms of thinking about the block space. And so, you know, in plain English, what the benefits promise to be are a fewfold. One, you can now deal with arbitrary amounts. Um, whether they mean truly arbitrary, like it can literally be anything, I think remains to be seen. But they've said that, you know, you no longer need the current minimum, which is 0.1 Bitcoin. And if you think about that, that could be prohibitive for a lot of users. Um, that is the current minimum that you need in order to use um, Wasabi's current implementation of their zero link framework. Uh, it also eliminates the maximum of seven Bitcoin. So again, by enabling arbitrary amounts, that provides a lot more flexibility for users. Benefit two related to that is that users will no longer have to kind of iterate many times um, just to mix a bigger stack. So for example, if you were to put a whole Bitcoin through the implementation today, you'd basically have like, you know, 0.1 mixed and then maybe 0.9 returned to you as change. And then the next 0.1 is mixed and then 8.8 .8 is returned to you to change and so on and so on and so forth. And so you're kind of iterating through uh, based on the requirement to have the output sizes be identical across users that entered in uh, to that uh, coin join process. So that's also nice. Uh, benefit three, and again, related to all that, is that this can potentially eliminate toxic change um, entirely in, in some of these transactions. And so that would be very nice, especially again for a more average user who you know, maybe hasn't thought as much about coin control and you know, individual UTXOs, and some of those UTXOs are mixed and some of them are not, right? This helps abstract away some of that as well. And then the final benefit is around um, better fees per user. So essentially by doing some of the things we just talked about, being able to, in some cases, remove toxic change entirely, uh, being able to remove the um, sort of bounds and requirements of equal uh, denominations, uh, and being able to have more participants coming in, all of this makes these transactions more efficient from a sort of block space uh, standpoint. And so it would stand to reason that on a per user basis, uh, the fees associated with doing this uh, could be lower, which would again also be nice. Beyond those benefits, this framework also sets Wasabi Wallet up to generalize the coin join functionality even more broadly. And by that, I mean, um, you know, right now users are coming in, they're sort of mixing their coins um, and, and, sort, and that's it. But imagine being able to spend your Bitcoin and send it from me to an, another individual and have a coin join sort of happen as part of that process. Um, that, that is very cool and enables being able to send to sort of unknown destinations, which helps protect the privacy of the sender. Uh, you could also do spending within a coin join transaction itself, which improves the pr privacy of both sender and receiver. And so um, that's also part of this, right? Big themes are making this more accessible to an average user and also teeing the technology up to be able to accommodate some of these other uh, privacy related use cases, which is great. Now, before we move on and I talk about timelines, I do just want to mention one general note about coin mixing. And it is that there have been anecdotal accounts of third parties like exchanges, um, like services where maybe you, you know, are depositing some Bitcoin to earn interest on it, etc. cetera. Uh, there have been anecdotal cases of some of these entities reaching out to users and being like, hey, you, know, you deposited some Bitcoin on this date. Um, from what we can see, it appears to have been mixed, right? Um, and as far as I can tell, it's not like, oh, we since we have that suspicion, you are now banned from using this platform, but more so, hey, like, are you aware of that? Is like, what's the deal, you know, trying to kind of um, uh, investigate. And so be aware of this, right? Um, as Bitcoin becomes more and more in the mainstream, unfortunately, that will carry with it 
the desire by authorities, regulators, etc., to surveil more and more of it as well. And so you may have a world in which certain third parties like exchanges um, may refuse to receive Bitcoin that has been detected as being mixed, uh, you know, maybe in its last couple of transactions or whatever the case may be. So just be aware of that. I think one approach to this could be to mix um, a portion of your stack, but, but leave maybe a portion of your stack unmixed and separately managed you know, in a different wallet. So there's a lot of ways to kind of address this, but I will link a page that is uh, tracked some of these instances. It's just important to be aware of the broad picture here. Um, with that overview down, let's just talk quickly about some of the timelines. All right, so what are the next steps and timelines here? Um, as of this July 7th blog post, they estimated roughly 10 weeks um, with a, a more worst case scenario being closer to 14 weeks, which would peg us somewhere in the mid to late September region. And so this is um, you know coming right up. And if we look at their broader uh, implementation timeline, um, it's a little, a little bit hard to read this, but basically they're going to um, they're going to start doing an initial release. Um, Again, we can probably expect that to begin mid to late September. From there, there will be some iteration. Uh, you'll be encouraged to use it without, you'll be encouraged to kind of test it out, um, you know, which you will be able to do without putting, you know, a bunch of funds in. Uh, and so there will be some additional iteration, I'm sure. There will probably be bugs to fix. And then the final, final release will go out once uh, all of that has been resolved. And so, um, you know, this probably pegs us towards later in the year for that kind of final release, but it remains a little bit to be seen. Now, uh, 1.0, Wasabi 1.0 will eventually be deprecated uh, and go away, but only at, at which, only once users have uh, migrated over to 2.0. So again, if you're not subscribed and you're using Wasabi, be sure to uh, subscribe so you can stay tuned. I will keep you uh, posted with all the latest and greatest updates. Uh, but that is currently what we know thus far in terms of timeline. Uh, let's now go ahead and close this video out. All right, so there you have it, my friends. Just as a quick recap, we provided a refresher on Bitcoin fungibility. Uh, as well as how CoinJoin um, interacts with that. We then took a look at what the Wasabi Wallet 2.0 update is promising in terms of a completely revamped UI, as well as a new CoinJoin uh, implementation with Wasabi. Uh, and so this really does promise to bring privacy by default to the more average user, which is very exciting to see. I know I didn't go into the gory depths of you know, the current Zero Link framework, and the blind signatures that it uses there versus the you know Wabi Sabi protocol, which is going to use keyed verification, uh, you know, credential scheme. But again, I have linked the white paper and related research in the description down below if you are so curious in going through it. Um, but this promises to bring more flexibility for users, which I think is a very good thing. Um, but we'll go ahead and leave this video here for now. I hope you found this valuable and useful. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like, comment down below. What do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts about the impending update? Um, you know, are there topics related to this that you'd like to see covered in future videos? Please do let me know as I really do take that into account when making the schedule for the channel. But again, we'll go ahead and leave this video here. As always, every set counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.